Hey guys, Trent Ty here with Purgatory Ironworks and we're going to be talking about forges this week. And uh, in this video, we're going to cover the four basic different types of forges that are out there and just kind of give you an idea of the lay of the land. Now don't worry, as we get along further into the week, we're going to go into each of these in detail. But this is your primer on heating up a piece of metal. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So if you did not see my No Excuses video, you might want to go watch that in that particular video. I basically make a yard fire and stick a leaf blower to it and I have a forge and that is the absolute truth. For you beginners out there, don't unnecessarily overcomplicate this process. The fact is, is you need a heat source and an air blast and that will constitute a forge. So the first type of forge we're going to look at, a yard fire. Basically what I did in that video is I built a yard fire with some french fry boxes, some twigs, sticks, whatever I could find to burn and put an air blast to it and that is a forge now it gets a little bit aggravating because there's a lot of uh, extraneous heat come off there's a lot of extra flame uh, but it will work as it does in the video the second type on that end of that particular vein is going to be a pit fire uh, this type of forge is still used in africa and a lot of other places this is where instead of just having that yard fire up it's actually a little more contained you dig a shallow hole uh, maybe six seven inches deep and you put the fire down in that but then what you do is you actually run a pipe under the ground to provide the air blast into the fire. Uh, again, very effective. The forges I have seen have actually been goat skin bellows. Some of them have been banana leaves. But again, the idea is, is that your fire is contained and you have an air blast going in there. So all you need is some goats and uh, a shovel and you're in business. The other thing that I want to point out is a dirt table. Now this is amazing. I've actually seen one of these before. Uh, basically there's going to be two types of solid fuel forges and there's an old type. So in today's forges there is a fire pot. There's basically a place that holds the fire and the air blast comes up through the bottom. We call this a bottom blast. But in the days of antiquity, before 1860, uh, in, that, in that particular area, the air blast actually came in from the side using something known as a twir iron. And I got to see a blacksmith, basically a, a temporary table, that they had made a wooden table uh, that had about a four inch uh, edge on it, and they had filled it with clay. And that dirt is a scientific uh, refractory material uh, that resists thousands and thousands of degrees. And that is absolutely the truth. So they had a dirt table. They built the fire on top of the dirt table and simply added the air blast from the side. So this is about as basic as you get. As long as you've got access to wood charcoal, not Kingsford, we'll get into that later, but wood charcoal or anything that can burn down into a coal uh, in an air blast, you can get some really, really good heat out of it. And those are your three first methods. Now, uh, stepping up a little bit in the technology tree, we're going to move into what is known as a fire pot. Now, uh, this is what most of you are going to know as a blacksmith's forge. This is a uh, usually a metal table or a brick table that has a metal pot that sits in the middle of it. So those fire pots, uh, of course, the most famous out there is going to be your brake rotor fire pot. Uh, you have cast iron fire pots, which have been around uh, now for quite some time, uh, which they're a poured and cast iron deal. Uh, you have steel, which are usually welded up fire pots. A lot of people like myself, they're professionals, simply take some half inch plate and weld up the pot. Or you can have a brick fire pot. I've actually seen uh, the act instead of there being a an iron pot that actually brick forms the basis for um, the pot itself so the great advantage of this this is an upgrade of course it's on a table and the great thing about having a table is that you can contain all sorts of extra fuel so let me see if I got right here so if you have your fire pot sitting here and then we're going to draw a brake rotor okay brake rotor looks like this and this is usually where your air supply comes in uh, if you just have this set on bricks or some cinder blocks, which a lot of us have done before, uh, the issue becomes is that it's hard to get enough fuel in this area to really do any type of meaningful work. However, if you come in and you add some sort of table, uh, be it sheet metal or brick, 
uh, that actually extends to the sides. Now you can actually pile fuel uh, here and here and make a much deeper, uh, much more manageable fire. So the fire pot allows you just to build a, a better fire without having to be on your hands and knees. Uh, again, there's two basic ways of air blast. There's the side blast and the bottom blast. The bottom blast is absolutely superior. Uh, it also helps you with a little bit of clinker removal and ash, but we'll get to that later. Now, the third option, stepping on up that particular ladder, is gas. Now, uh, there are, I, and again, I, I'm going to throw a caveat in here. There are very few professional blacksmiths that gas forges are not their main furnace, period. Now, just like with me, a lot of times we have a backup, but usually solid fuel forges for professionals are backup forges or secondary to our gas forges. Why? Because they work. Uh, the gas forge is really, or the gas furnace is really the height of the blacksmith's forge at this point simply because uh, it is controllable and the fuel source is easy and it's in the pipeline. Here in Georgia it's very difficult to get coal, however I can have hundreds and thousands of gallons of propane delivered to my door uh, and it's very, very inexpensive. So. For people that uh, do this professionally, gas is the way to go. And almost always, for, for most of you guys getting started, it's going to be store-bought. Uh, because of Forge the Fire and this sudden uh, uptick in uh, interest in blacksmithing and whatnot, there are several companies now that offer different types of forges. Uh, these are basically broken down into two different categories. You have atmospheric and you have a ribbon burner, which we've also done some videos on, so go check that out. Fourth, and this is probably the pinnacle of technology, and that's going to be your induction forge. Uh, there are a few knife makers that use these, but this is almost exclusively an industrial high-end deal. An induction forge is really, really cool. Basically, there's a copper coil, and all you do is stick a piece of metal into the copper coil, and in just a few seconds, the metal goes from ambient temperature to a couple thousand degrees. Uh, they are expensive, uh, little buggers. Uh, they are also very energy hungry, uh, so they are really a specialty item and for those of you guys out there, if you're going to do any type of, of, of any real blacksmith work, this is going to be pretty much out of the question, but I just wanted to throw it in because it is super cool. If you're a knife maker and happen to do a lot of production work, I've seen knife makers that use this type of uh, a forge and it's, it's pretty freaking awesome. But so guys, that is going to be your basic types of forges over the coming week. What we're going to end up doing is actually going through each of these, giving you some demonstrations so you can figure out what's going to be the best to start off your blacksmithing and bladesmithing career. Guys, thank you again for watching. If you got anything out of it, do a brother a favor, hit that subscribe button. Uh, guys, thank you again. And as always, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I read them pretty religiously. And uh, who knows, you may get your name and uh, video done on your behalf. Guys, take care, and I'll see you a little bit later.